Welcome back to Fix This Build That. Today we're gonna make a DIY work table that is super cheap and easy to make, and it's gonna give you a ton of extra workspace in your shop. My goal was to build a big, strong mobile work table as cheaply and easily as possible. It's got a 48 by 40 inch top, and it only uses eight two by fours and a full sheet of MDF. Now finding straight material is the biggest challenge when you're using two by fours. And what you really wanna stay away from are the boards with twist in them. Now an easy way to check for twist is to press down on the edges of a board. And if the two by four rocks, then it's got twist. And twist is bad. But you can also check the edges for straightness by pulling the boards together. Now any gaps mean that one or both of those boards next to each other are not straight. So I went through the boards and set aside the straightest ones for the exterior of the work table for the top and bottom frame. I set a stop block on my miter saw to make repeatable cuts and then I cut the frame pieces for the top and bottom shelf at the same time. The frames are the same size so it makes it easy to get all the cuts done at once and again get quickly into assembly. Now the 48 by 40 inch top is bigger than any of my current work surfaces so I had to build the frames on the floor. Now working on the floor really stinks, but doing a couple things will make it a little bit easier and it's gonna make it as accurate as possible. So first I cleared out a spot and I vacuumed up all the dust and debris off of the floor. Your top's only gonna be as flat as the surface that you build it on, so make sure you take this step. So next, go ahead and grab a straight edge or a level and check the floor. And the spot where I normally have my workbench has this nice little hump in it. You can see my level rocking back and forth. But in front of my back shop cabinets, I had a little area that was almost dead flat, so that's where I'm going to build the frames. I laid out the long front and back boards for my frame, and I checked them against the floor. I found the flattest side of each 2x4, and I marked it as the top side to get the best shot at a flat table. Next, I brought the sides and the two inner braces in, and I repeated that process for each 2x4. After marking the best edges, I turned them all down towards the floor so I could reference that somewhat flat surface that I found in my shop. Now, as a recovering engineer, I'm a big fan of symmetry and precise layouts. So I made marks on the edge where I wanted my screws to be centered on the front and back. And then I grabbed a carpenter square and I marked the locations of the screw for an overly thought out process, which I love. Now I started on the near corner and I used a scrap block to flush up the outside board with the front. Now a 90 degree clamping square and a couple of small clamps lined everything up while I drove in my first screws. And the screws I'm using here are number 10 3 inch screws. I plan on having a lot of weight on the top of the table and those bad boys are going to be way stronger than drywall screws, but they're probably overkill. You could get away with drywall screws more than likely. I worked my way down the front and lined up the braces on my layout lines clamp them square, and then screw them all in. And the back frame goes on exactly the same way, and within just a few minutes, you have a completed top frame. I brought in the boards for the other frame, and I repeated the assembly process, but this time I used a cheap right angle clamp. This is one of my granddad's tools. You can see it's kind of older here, but you can pick one up for really cheap, and actually went a lot faster using this one versus the two clamps and the clamping block. I'll have a link to a similar clamp like this in the description below, along with the other tools that I used. After I'd got the frames all made, I cut four legs to length to connect them. I'm using 30 inch legs, which when paired with my casters and a half inch MDF top, it's gonna give me a table height of 34 and a half inches. You can adjust that for your height that you need. Now each leg is connected to the frames with three screws. I laid out marks on each board for two screws that would go into the long grain of the side and one screw that's going to go into the end grain of the front or the back. Again, you don't have to lay it out this way, but man, it looks nice. To install these, I used a scrap block to position the leg flush with the front and then I clamped it in place. I checked that the leg was at 90 degrees to the floor and then I attached it at the screw locations that I laid out a minute ago. When attaching the second leg on the same side, you can really fine tune in the angle of them as needed. You want to make sure that the legs are square and parallel to each other. And the easy way to check that is to make sure that the distance between the leg at the bottom and at the top is the same distance. If you're off a little bit, then you can just unscrew two of the screws on the leg, nudge it in place, and then reseat those screws. And hey, if you enjoy seeing a lot of different projects and getting helpful tips like these, then go ahead and get subscribed. I've got plenty more projects coming from simple to complex and everything in between. Adding the bottom frame goes really quickly once the legs are mounted correctly. I flipped over the assembly and I flushed up the front and back legs with the bottom frame. 
I used a clamp to hold everything in place while I attached the first two screws and finished up with the third one. When I finished up the base, I took a few quick measurements just to confirm that nothing got out of square during assembly. Everything looked great, so I went ahead and mounted the casters to the bottom before flipping it over. And while I'm mounting the casters, let's talk about today's sponsor. FilterBuy is a family-owned business making HVAC filters here in the U.S. Their factory in Talladega, Alabama has been in the family for three generations, and they actually used to make parts for the U.S. military during the 40s. In 2008, the factory almost shut down, but one of the grandsons of the original owner felt compelled to buy the facility from his grandfather and save the local jobs. They switched over to making furnace filters, and now they have over 600 sizes in stock with free 24-hour shipping, and they can make custom sizes for you. I'll have a link down below in the description where you can find out more, and thanks to FilterBuy for sponsoring today's video. I'm cutting the top and shelf of the work table from half-inch MDF. You could substitute 3 quarter inch MDF for a little more heft, but the bracing is what gives the table the strength. The sheets were too big for my table saw, so I cut them down in the driveway, basically so I could just keep this whole floor heathen theme going on, but seriously though, I definitely need to get some work stands so I can cut these sheets off the ground, because it's just way better on your back, and it's going to be better long term uh, when I turn, you know, 72. And the top is 48 by 40, but the shelf is 45 by 40 since it's going to go between the legs versus the top, which is going to go on top of the legs. I slid the bottom shelf into place and I screwed it down along the perimeter and I added a couple screws along the bracing to keep it from bouncing with any vibration. I'll show you how I laid out all the screws, but doing it on the top piece is going to be a little bit easier. So the top of the work table lines up with the corners. It's going to be flush on the front, but it'll have a small overhang on the sides. I actually plan on using that overhang for something later, but you could put another 2x4 there if you wanted it to be flush all the way around. I used a combination of a metal ruler and a carpenter square to quickly lay out my screws down to the nearest thousandths of an inch, you know, because engineering. I lined the ruler up flush on one side and then overlaid the square on top of the ruler at every eight inches. Then I just made a mark three quarter inches from the edge to center that screw on the 2x4. And to get the screw locations for the inner bracing, I just visually lined up the square with the screws on the front, and then I laid the ruler up against it. Then I made a mark every 10 inches along the brace, again, just to make sure that everything's really secure and I won't have any bounce. I used a countersink bit with a non-marring depth stop for all of these. Now this will give me a consistent depth of each screw, and it'll make sure that none of the screws are sticking up above the surface. And you can secure the first few screws in one corner and then hit another one in that opposite corner. This will make sure that the top stays in place while you're securing everything else. With all the marks made, I just went into Zen mode and I just pre-drilled and screwed down all of those pieces along the top. I'm using one and a quarter inch screws here and this may look tedious to you, but I kind of find it oddly satisfying to do this process. So after the top was down, I rounded it over the corners to match the curve on the 2x4 edges. This will keep me from snagging anything on them as I go around the work table. Then I applied a couple coats of polyurethane to protect the surface. I used a water-based polyurethane because it dries fast, but it does rough up the surface a little bit. But a quick sanding between coats will get rid of that. Now the work table is big and sturdy and you can make it quickly for really cheap. It's perfect for an assembly or an outfeed table or maybe a CNC. Hmm. If you want some more shop projects, I got a playlist queued up for you right now. If you want to build this work table, I've got free plans for you. There's a link down below in the description. You can check it out. Until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.